G'day folks and welcome to the Off-Road Adventure Show. You know, we have a saying here that the best adventures start in your own backyard. And when my old mate Vic from Great Divide Tours invited us to take a look around his neck of the woods, well, we jumped at the chance. So let's go find out what's in Vic's backyard. Also on the show this week, Starlow's going back to his roots and showing us some jetty fishing. Caroline's hang gliding over the stunning Gold Coast hinterland and Adrian has a top-notch paella that'll make your mouth water. From the sea to the desert, mountains covered in snow, from the crisp blue sky to all the mud below. We'll take you where the fish are always on the go. Gonna show you lots of places no one else will ever know. So get out of your house, it ain't very hard. All the best of it, just start in your own backyard. Your fried and venture shine. This week's adventure starts at Vic's four-wheel drive training centre in Braidwood. Vic's been telling me for years about this part of the world, so I'm well overdue to check it out. Well, mate, you've been bugging me to come and check out your backyard for ages now. I'm here. What are we going to see? Well, look, we're going to have a really good four-wheel drive track for you. We've got a great swimming hole and a really fantastic, peaceful campsite. So let's get into it, eh? Let's go find Jamie. Not only is Vic a tag-along tour operator and driver-trainer, but he's also an established four-wheel drive journalist and is regularly off-road testing the latest and greatest four-wheel drives. So when we threw him the keys to a new MUX hitched up with the Easy Trail camper trailer, he was more than happy to put them both through their paces. It's not long after heading off from Vic's place that we turn off the bitumen and make our way down to the Turos Cascades. So Vic, we're approaching the Cascades now, mate. When did you first find out about this place? Yeah, Rick, look, I was started exploring down around this area, would you believe, in the, uh, the late 1980s, and uh, came across this area and thought it was really good, and we started running some tag-along tours in, into the Cascades in the early 1990s. What's the best time of the year to come and visit this place, Vic? Yeah, look, autumn and spring are beautiful. Um, winter gets really, really cold down here. I've had a minus seven one night down this way. Uh, not unlikely to get a bit of snow occasionally as well. All right, mate, well, it's, uh, it's killer warm in the 60 and I'm as keen as for a swim, so let's get to these Cascades, eh? The Cascades are located in the Wadbilliga National Park. The park is 400 kilometres south of Sydney, or 150 kilometres southeast of Canberra. It's not long before we pull into the car park, and I'll tell you what, it's a lucky thing. We've just pulled into the Cascades car park, and we hopped out of the vehicles, and fortunately, Jamie looked down and saw one of the wheel nuts off Rick's car sitting right next to the front wheel. Closer inspection, we can see that he's lost all but one of the wheel nuts. Now, that often happens when you're out four-wheel driving. One wheel nut starts to work loose, and it drops off, and it probably dropped off kilometres ago and then all the others start to work loose and then they drop off pretty much in the last probably 100 metres or so. So look, it's not a real disaster. We're going to go for a walk back up the track and see if we can find those other wheel nuts and get ourselves out of this little spot of bobble we're in. Well, we'll keep it a keen eye out and hey, look at that, there's one right there. There you go, all right. Take a little walk and you'll find the wheel nut. We'll keep walking, we'll probably find a couple more yet, save the day. We ended up with four wheel nuts. Normally there's six, but that's going to get us out of trouble. We'll steal one off one of the other wheels, put it on. We'll keep checking them every so often. We'll get back into town and get some replacement wheel nuts. Good idea to carry some with you when you're doing a big trip though. With all four wheels secure, it was finally time for our swim. From the car park, it's only a short stroll to the viewing platform where you can see the falls flowing into the gorge and swimming holes. The falls are actually part of the Turos River, and if you're in the area, they're definitely worth a look. If it's a hot day like today, the icy water will cool you down quickly. The water today is about 18 degrees, and if you can brave it for long enough, there's some good fun to be had in here. Some kids just never grow up. Cascades has a great little campsite, so we agreed to set up here for the night. A cool change was predicted to come in overnight, so I think Vic was pretty happy to be bunked in the camper trailer. If you want to stay at the Cascades campsite, it's always a good idea to pre-book, as it can get busy in the warmer months. 
The next morning, we awoke to a totally different scene. The cool change had come in and brought with it some low cloud, which engulfed the entire area. You know, one of my favorite things about camping is mornings like this. It's so peaceful, it's quiet, and it's absolutely beautiful. Now, here's a bit of a tip. If you're like us and you've got to put your gear away wet, what you need to do, especially if you've invested in quality gear like we have, is put it back up to dry as soon as you possibly can. That way you're going to avoid things like mould and just general deterioration. Many of us four-wheel drivers want to give our vehicles a good challenge, and Vic has a great little track up his sleeve for us to check out. Apparently this one was going to get steep and rocky, so Vic decided to leave the camper trailer somewhere safe and return for it later. Driving the Badger trail at any time is pretty, but doing it surrounded in low cloud adds a whole different element. As we climb ever upward, the cloud layer disappears behind us and we find ourselves with a pretty gnarly little hill climb. Now this looks like fun. Let's keep a steady throttle, that's pretty good. Nice work mate. Yeah, that's a nice little climb. It's a little bit scrabbly um, halfway up, but you know, just a steady throttle, you boys will be fine. I've been throwing some rocks back, I reckon, Rick. Yeah, I'm gonna keep my distance, mate. Last thing I want is some of that shaly stuff in my windscreen. I love a track where you can't see the track. G'day, it's Vic Whitman here. I've been four-wheel driving for over 30 years and I've been a judge for four-wheel drive of the year for over 10 years. I'm driving the Isuzu Mux today and we're towing a trailer off-road. And I'll tell you what, it's doing it really easily. The power-to-weight ratio is great. You certainly don't feel the trailer very much at all on the back of the car. The automatic transmission's geared nicely and in lower range, it still pulls really well off-road. Isuzu Mux, uh, in a towing situation like this, absolutely brilliant. Jamie and I are checking out the Wadbilligan National Park and its surrounds with our mate Vic Widman, who lives in the area. We've just made it to the summit of the Badger Trail, and only a short walk from here, we reach the Badger Trig Point. Oh, look at this place. Oh, check this out, eh? Look at that, we're above the clouds. There's rain down in the valley there. Look out this way. All the coastal cloud, the whole coast down there is covered in cloud. Absolutely beautiful. That is tremendous, isn't it? We're at 1355. 1355 metres above sea level. Yeah. Th that's high country stuff, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. After taking in the sights from this amazing vantage point, it was time to hook up the trailer again and make tracks for Conway's Gap. Conway's Gap is a steep and narrow track which descends almost 700 metres into the valley below. OK, guys, um, well, the fog's come back in and uh, we're starting to descend through Conway's Gap. Uh, Conway's Gap is the point where the road drops from the top of the range down into the valley below, down on the coastal section. And we're getting all this uh, fog coming through here because you've got the warm, moist air from the coast suddenly rising up the uh, edge of the escarpment and just condensing. Doesn't it look brilliant? Mate, this is genuinely spectacular. This is something else. And that's a sure is a long way down on that side of us. Unfortunately, this is where we had to part ways with Vic but not before he gave us some directions to a pretty cool place to spend the night. Well, mate, I understand you've got somewhere else to be, but thanks so much for showing us around. It's been incredible. No, it's been my pleasure. Yeah, look, I've got to duck off and do some driver training up at the driver training centre at Braidwood, but what a magic couple of days we've had. No worries. But well, look, you've given me some instructions for Alexander's Hut, and looking at this weather, mate, it's probably not a bad idea. Mate, I think it's going to get pretty wet and cold tonight, so at least in there you'll be safe, dry and warm. No worries, mate. Well, thanks again. Go on, you, Rick. We'll catch up soon, eh? Have a great time, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Alexander Hut is a timber slab hut that was occupied right up until the 1980s. Today, it's used as a great place to take shelter or spend the night for bushwalkers or travellers like us. I'll tell you what, it's places like this that keep me coming out and exploring time and time again. You know, yesterday I didn't even know this joint existed, and today I'm gonna to be camping here. 
I reckon it's time to go get the fire going. Catch you next time.